Hi everyone, it's Steve from Azimuth Images here again. This week's video we're going to take a look at lens corrections. And pretty much every lens will have some degree of distortion, uh, some degree of chromatic aberration. And the good news is that that's pretty easy to fix in post-production, editing, call it what you will. Providing, of course, you take the time to do it. And it's not tricky. So I'm using uh, CS, currently flying 2021. But it does work just the same um, the previous editions of CS. So the image I'm going to load up is this one here. It was taken back in January uh, 2019 at Drake Low Tunnels, which if you've not been is an absolutely fabulous day out. They do specialised photography wonders where you can take a tripod and take lights and, and really have a, a great time there. It's not overly cheap, it must be said, but it is a really good, really good uh, expedition take torches, take clothing, it is cold, it is underground. The normal trips, they don't allow you to take tripods and the like, so it's a bit restrictive for us photographers. It is worth paying the extra to do one of the photo tours. They limit the number of people on it. Everybody's respectable of each other's uh, ability to require light or dark, as the case might be. So I've opened up this image here, and it is currently sitting in RAW. And you notice down here, I have got ticked, remove chromatic aberration, and use profile corrections. I'm going to open this image up twice and the first one I'm going to take off those two options. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, chromatics today, we're really focusing on the, the lens corrections. I've set auto up here and we're just going to let that roll. I will need to correct that in just a moment. So we'll open that up as our version 1. Takes a few seconds. Happy days, and there we go. Because the conditions uh, are interesting down there, shall we suggest, um, I'm going to open it up a second time, and this time I'm going to select CA and select Profile Corrections. So I'll open that up, and now I should have two versions of that image. The second one should open up in just a second. Okay, so throughout this it's going to be useful to remember that the image that we've put lens corrections onto is the one on the right, this one here, and the one that we have not applied corrections to is the one on the left, this one here. So we'll start with the, the uncorrected first. So if I click onto that one, I'm going to do the same things to both of these images just to make it easier to work on so you can see where my lines are going a little better. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer and multiply it up. So, Control J, uh, I believe that's Command J on a Mac, and then my blend mode down here, I'm just going to go to Multiply. Voila. I will do exactly the same to the other image so that we can see the comparison. So, with Control J, and we've gone to Multiply. And we've now got two images that look pretty much the same. To make this nice and easy, am I going to flatten these two layers as well? So, I'm just going to Shift and Hold. Right click, flatten image, so I've just got one layer to mess with. Do the same over here, and so we just shift and click, right click, and flatten image. So the one we're looking at now, um, we'll, we'll take a peek at, we'll zoom into that and see what's going on. I know the perspective is all over the place. Uh, I couldn't get square onto this. Uh, there were the limitations of where I could get the tripod and the height I could achieve. So I, I'm aware that this is not perspectively corrected. What I'm going to do is straighten this up. So I'm going to go Control Plus uh, to zoom in a couple of times. And then I'm going to scroll down the page a little. I can get another Control Plus onto there. And I'm going to use the Line Tool. Now, over here, I've already got this pre-selected. For some reason, the Ruler Tool lives underneath the Eyedropper Tool. I have absolutely no idea why, but that's just where it is. So having selected that, I'm going to very carefully go just to the very top of that red line, click and drag across to the far end of that line, and let go. And already, you can see that things aren't great. If I now rotate this using the top of that red line, using the, the left and the right parts of that, <coughs> excuse me, we'll now do an image, image rotation, arbitrary, and it's selected a value of 0.97, that's fine, that's, that's neither here nor there at the moment. So that is now as far as this left corner 
and this right corner go, they are on the same horizontal plane. And we'll go to the other one, and we'll zoom into that one a few times as well, so Control plus, or use the magnifying glass, whichever suits you best, and we will then scroll down a little, get it on the screen so we can see what's going on, and do exactly the same, so with our rule tool selected, we will go to the top corner of the left, drag across to the top corner of the right, try and get that as accurate as I can for you, and if we do an image rotate now, we will have a slightly different arbitrary figure. Okay, so there we have it. Now we've got these two done, what we're going to find is a real difference. Uh, it's quite noticeable when you zoom in, and it's particularly noticeable if you have an absolute straight vertical or horizontal. And this can also apply if you've got a, a, a seascape in particular where there's a real big horizontal line where we get sea meeting air and it really does look bad. Uh, the, the horizon will curve one way or the other and people will tell you, oh, the, you know, the earth does curve. It doesn't curve that much, believe me. What we have now is a line here and I'm going to draw this line back in and the reason I'm doing this is this line is going to be straight. Okay. Now, if we look at this line, I appreciate it is quite thin on here at the moment. If we do a control plus a couple of times, this line does sit absolutely on top of that red border. I do appreciate that's a little tricky to see, but you can see it is actually nicely all the way along there. That red line is absolutely great. Bear in mind, this is an old poster, so forgive the fact it's uh, probably about 60, 70 years old now. Uh, more than that, in fact. So if we go back to the other one, uh, where we have not applied correction, and we now draw a straight line in, so we'll get to that top corner there, and click and drag across to here, and get that nice and accurate for us. That's pretty close. Marvellous. Now if we zoom in, it's pretty easy to see that the red band of print clearly is not straight. You can see here this bows away quite noticeably from the horizontal line. And as I say, on a, a, an image with a big horizon, typically a seascape, that gets really noticeable. So all I've done to correct that, let's go to the version 2, is to use the automatic profile correction within Photoshop. And that really is something that is very, very worth doing. Whilst we're here, I will also do some more corrections. So I'm going to get rid of the one that has not been profile corrected. I'll just X out of that. No, I don't want to save any changes, thank you. And we're back onto our normal image. So Control 0, and I believe that's Command 0 on a Mac, will get you back to a full screen or zoom. Because the angle I had to take this image, I couldn't get square on. You'll appreciate that I've made the red line horizontal, but the rest of the image clearly is not square, rectangular if you want to be precise. So I'm going to use perspective crop, which is up here. When you do perspective crop, there are many, many options, and my normal trick is to forget the set them first. So my camera shoots 4000 by 6000 by default, and I've set my resolution to 3000, uh, sorry, 300. That'd be big, wouldn't it? You can make this whatever you want, so you can have this as a finished size. So if you know the size you want this image to end up, then you can select that here, Clearly try and keep it in perspective, no pun intended, or it's going to squish it and distort it humongously, which may be what you want, but probably isn't. So I've set this for 4000 by 6000 at 300 pixels, and all I'm going to do now is just zoom a little with a bit of Control Plus so I can see what's going on, and I'm going to draw around very roughly the corners. The important thing with this is you have to get all of the bits in that you want. So I'm going to actually sew over here and over here and you can see there I'm just starting to miss this top right hand corner that would cause us problems so if that's the case click on that little sign up there and take a slightly wider option it doesn't matter but if you go too wide we can adjust this later on so that seems to be roughly where we want to be marvelous now I'm going to zoom in some more here uh, I'm not going to commit with a tick yet because I'm clearly not ready and a bit of control plus will get me zoomed in. I use the magnifying glass if you wish, it's entirely up to you. 
And all we need to do now is to drop this corner to where we want this corner to be. And I'm just going to drop that down to there somewhere. And then we drop this corner down. Doesn't matter what order you do these in, so that it looks about level across the top. And I say this is a very old poster, so it might be great. And now I need to drag this in here as well. So I've now got my top right corner, give or take where I want it to be. We'll come back to the top left in a moment. Moving down my image, all I need to do now is to move this corner, the bottom right, to where I want that to be. And I'm hopefully just going to get inside that shadow line. So we'll move across, do my best here. I've got a face full of light, so it might be perfect. And then, of course, we need to adjust this one over here. And we can adjust these as many times as we like. If it all goes horrendously wrong, then all you need to do is click up here and it will reset everything for you. I'm now going to go back to my first corner and make sure that looks okay. It's not actually too bad at all, to be fair. So for the purpose of what we're going to do today, I'm going to accept that and click the tick. But just before I do, can you please take a look here and you can see the guidelines inside here, and the type is now sitting very nicely along that line. As I say, it's a very old poster, it's never going to be perfect. Now when I click my tick, we now have an image that's pretty much okay, so we'll control zero just to get a full screen, and we've got it as good as it's ever going to get given the age. So there's a brief introduction as to how to do a lens correction, and how to do a perspective crop and just for interest I'm going to zoom a little bit here put a few lines into it and I tend to use this guideline I rather than draw guidelines everywhere I will use the top mark part of my frame as a, a kind of rough and ready uh, lazy option if you like so if I roll my image to the top there you can see hopefully I've got that about right that is pretty close and I say it's an allowance for the poster's age as much as anything else. If we roll across the text, it's looking pretty good. If we roll there, so we might be, oh, and that's whisker out, I guess. But to all intents and purposes, again, given the age of the poster, the image it was taken at, uh, the angle rather, and if I just cut there. So that is actually pretty good as far as it goes. Back to control zero, get the full screen look. And that briefly is how to do a perspective crop and how to use Adobe's image correction. I will now place on the screen for you somewhere here a link to the tunnels they are very worth supporting and a link to this image that is available on the fabulous people at lens to print Remember as ever folks if you like it it's a great image if somebody else likes it that's a bonus. Stay safe.